Boris Johnson once accused the EU of putting a revolver on the negotiating table. Today, the EU's Maros Shevchevich saw Liz Truss slap a countdown clock on the table, ticking down to a bill that would rip up the protocol Britain signed just two years ago. To respond to the very grave and serious situation in Northern Ireland, we are clear there is a necessity to act to ensure the institutions can be restored as soon as possible. Cabinet this morning signed off on the plan to introduce a bill that would allow Britain to unilaterally override parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Conservative MPs were divided on whether that should happen immediately or was completely wrong-headed. The only way you're going to get the EU to come to the negotiation table and really negotiate with you is if you threaten them with that bill. Respect for the rule of law, Mr Speaker, runs deep in our Tory veins. I find it extraordinary that a Tory government needs to be reminded of that. Well, we fully respect the rule of law and we're very clear that this bill is in line with international law. The EU said if Boris Johnson tries to rewrite the treaty he signed, it would respond with all measures at its disposal. Britain's former top diplomat at the EU said full trade war measures could be preceded by smaller ones as the bill progresses. They will commence legal proceedings against the UK uh, and say you are uh, deliberately in breach of the protocol. They'll freeze the, any elements of the positive relationship with the UK on you know, science and technology and education, all of that. You can forget all of that. They'll say none of that happens while the Brits are behaving like this. And the appetite will grow on the European side to say we can't go on like this. We simply have to hit these guys between the eyes and pick some specific retaliatory measures and safeguard measures that will concentrate the mines in London. Liz Truss said negotiations with the EU over Northern Ireland trade laws would only succeed if EU leaders agreed a new negotiating mandate. But the tone in Brussels suggests that's highly unlikely. I do not understand why Prime Minister Johnson is always inventing new ideas instead of doing his job, which is simply implementing the agreement which he himself and his government was negotiating. Seen from their perspective, They've seen him sign and ratify the protocol, declare it a big negotiating triumph and say, say it was the opening of a new chapter in British history um, and you know, a fundamental negotiating success for himself and for David Frost. And then 18 months later, it becomes a gross constitutional affront and a fundamental assault on UK sovereignty. Now they think, by and large, the people I, I hear from, they think, well, this was clearly the, in the intention all along, and he was just waiting for the opportune moment to reopen the whole text and was never, never serious about um, implementing it or implementing an agreed version of it. Well, if you think that, it's quite a high bar for the next negotiation, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest. It is beautiful. Boris Johnson visiting the Elizabeth Line today. EU sources accuse him of adding new demands for protocol changes which don't have significant support in Northern Ireland. How many of these are non-negotiable could decide whether a deal can be struck, as could the pace the government now moves at with its controversial new bill. Well, what has been the reaction from politicians and businesses in Northern Ireland? Our policy correspondent Paul McNamara is in Belfast now. Paul. Yeah, well, first off, this place remains shut. That hasn't changed. Remember, the DUP are refusing to form a Northern Ireland executive with Sinn Féin because, they say, of problems with the protocol. Well, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, the DUP's leader, his tone seemed to soften today. He welcomed the government's proposals, called them a significant move. He said he hopes to see progress on a bill to deal with protocol problems in days and weeks, not months. So, look, Stormont remains in stalemate for now, but a hint from him that perhaps we might see a gradual move to getting this back open. And what have businesses made of today's announcement? Yeah, look, frustration mainly. Look, remember that while this has been a political football going backwards and forwards over the last 18 months, it's businesses that day in, day out have been actually dealing with the, with the repercussions of the protocols. All the business groups here have released statements today saying similar, they want a negotiated system with Oh, uh, we will on both sides, they think uh, the jargon being used is a landing zone uh, for assessment. But while there's been little detail released by the government, the little detail that it has has already gotten some criticism. So the boss of manufacturing NI, 
that's one of the biggest business groups over here. He said to me that actually one of the suggestions um, could actually make things worse for businesses in Northern Ireland. So one of the systems is a dual system. Businesses can choose between UK and EU standards, what they call a, a, uh, a dual regulatory system. He said, well, actually, that can make things harder. It could be more cost, more complexity, more confusion. It's the opposite of what they want. Tomorrow, about 200 business leaders are actually going to Westminster for a reception that they hope the Prime Minister will be making an appearance at. The message we've heard a few times today, and I suspect that Boris Johnson will be told to his face tomorrow by them, is just get on with it. Paul in Belfast, thanks very much. Well, the German MEP Anna Cavazzini is chair of the European Parliament's Committee on the Internal Market and Consumer Protection. She joins me now from Brussels. Anna Cavazzini, you're not really going to start a trade war with the UK if they go ahead with this bill, are you? Um, for sure, um, that is not the option that we as European Union prefer. I mean, a trade war, I think all of us who are reasonable uh, would notice that in the situation where we have an actual war going on, where we have um, to face global challenges like climate change, we don't need a trade war. But what is also clear on the other hand, if um, the UK government unilaterally, and that was also very clear in your reporting, um, decides to get rid of international negotiated agreement and breaks international law, then, it, of course, it also must have some consequences. But I still hope um, that the UK uh, government is basically only threatening and coming back to the negotiating table. Right, so you think it might be brinkmanship, in other words? Can you repeat this? Sorry. You think it might be brinkmanship. They don't really mean to go ahead with this bill. Um, I mean, we have seen in the past 18 months a lot of drama, a lot of threatening, and I think, of course, that can be one negotiation tactics to um, yeah, threaten always uh, with a big um, blow to trigger Article 16 or scrap, scrap the whole protocol, but I don't think it's a fair negotiation tactics. I think it would be better to really also, again, go to Northern Ireland, listen to the stakeholders, listen also, for example, to the businesses, and see what they right. want and see what the problems are and then find solutions. I think that would be um, the more fair and I think the better negotiation tactics. OK, so are you listening to the problems that businesses, for example, have at the moment? I mean, this is the form that they have to fill out for every animal product that crosses the Irish Sea. Uh, stipulated things like liquid egg white has to be treated at 55.6 degrees Celsius for 870 seconds. And Every product has to have this form attached to it. Each page has to be signed by a qualified vet. You can understand the frustration with the system of just trying to get a product across the Irish Sea, can't you? Mm -hmm. um, of course, I understand uh, the frustrations, but of course we need to um, look at the bigger political context. And the bigger political context is Brexit. Um, the context was also to absolutely avoid a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. And then, of course, you at some point have to control the goods that enter into the EU single market because the UK decided to not be part of the single market anymore. Of course, you need to have border controls. But I think what is interesting and very positive is that the Commission in October came up with very concrete proposals on how to ease um, the life of uh, businesses in uh, Northern Ireland or people in Northern Ireland who want to import um, items from the UK, for example, also um, a similar thing like an express lane for products that absolutely will stay in Northern Ireland, just to make right. sure um, that people in Northern Ireland get what they want without a big red tape, but also that we protect the EU single market because we need to have the border okay. controls, obviously. OK. Anna Cavazzini, thank you very much for joining us. Well, joining me now is the Northern Ireland Minister, Connor Burns. You heard there the MEP saying they don't really fully believe that you're going to pass this bill. Will you or is it brinkmanship? Well, look, we're very clear that we want to continue the negotiations with the European Commission that have been going on now for a substantial period of time. But we feel that the, the mandate, in essence, that Vice President Sekcevic has got does not allow him to go far enough to come up with practical solutions that will help us get this protocol back onto a cross-community consent basis and allow us to restore power sharing, devolved government in Northern Ireland, which is absolutely the priority for us and for the people of Northern Ireland. But, you know, 
The economy hasn't recovered from COVID. We're in the grip of the impact of the Ukraine war. Do you really want to inflict a trade war on us, which is what the EU is saying will happen if you pass this bill? No, we want to do no such thing. We want to find pragmatic, sensible solutions that mean that there is a different regime of checks on products, goods that are moving from Great Britain into Northern Ireland, internally within our own United Kingdom, and a more robust uh, so regime of checks talking, of, then, those things, of those things that are moving into the Irish Republic and therefore into the uh, European single market. And that is why we will continue to talk to Vice President, Vice President Sekcevic and his team. But we are also clear, Cathy, that we cannot stand by indefinitely and see the situation that is pervading in Northern Ireland continue. And that is why the Prime Minister, when he came to Northern Ireland yesterday, was very clear that if we cannot come to an agreement, which is our absolute wish, determination and desire, then we will take the necessary legislative measures to protect the integrity of our United Kingdom right. and to help restore devolved government in Northern Ireland. OK, and if you take those legislative measures, as you put it, what is the economic impact of that? Because I know the Treasury must have done the analysis and you must have seen that analysis. What is the impact? Well, the overall impact would be we could restore devolved government in Northern Ireland, which is absolutely essential. No, the yesterday, economic yesterday, impact. Yesterday afternoon, I went round the city centre of Belfast just talking uh, to ordinary people out enjoying the spring sunshine. And they want a government that is going to deliver for them on the National Health Service, the cost of living challenges. There's over £300 million available to the executive in Northern Ireland, over and above the largest yeah. financial settlement since devolution in the 90s. We want them to get but back into the government Treasury's... to deliver. Yeah. No, we understand that, but what is the Treasury's assessment of the economic impact of this legislation? We want to fix the protocol, Cathy, and if we can do this in a... No, 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 I, no, no, you're asking me a question. The Treasury does these... The Treasury does these economic impact assessments. I just want to know what that is. I assume you've seen it. You're asking me a question about what would be the impact of certain measures the EU may or may, na may, or may not take which we would not be able to answer until we know what measures they did take. The measure we want them to take is to engage constructively with us in talks to fix the protocol, to protect the internal market of the United Kingdom and at the same time protect the single market of the European Union. And we have tabled incredibly detailed proposals around a trusted trader scheme, strong criminal penalties for anybody who knowingly, predeterminately uh, breached that, and a real-time data sharing uh, with European enforcement officials. And we believe that these are practical solutions that will fix the protocol, put it back onto a cross-community consent basis, yeah. restore devolved government in Northern Ireland, protect the European single market and protect the integrity of that. our United Kingdom internal market. I get market. that, but I wasn't actually asking the question you said I was asking. I was asking what the Treasury's impact assessment was of the bill that you're now promising. I'm not asking what the impact assessment is of what the EU might do. I'm just asking about their assessment of the legislation you're proposing. Well, all the details will come forward, the details that we've, of what we've proposed to uh, the European Union, of the different consequences of different courses of action. But I think it's, what's important at this point is to re-emphasise that we are still determined to reach a conclusion with our European friends and allies in a negotiated uh, way that leads to a durable, long-term certainty for businesses and society in Northern Ireland. Has the Treasury done an impact assessment or not yet? The Treasury will be looking at informing all the decisions across government as they always do and information will come forward in a timely way as we develop okay. the proposals and bring them to Parliament. OK, very briefly, Conservative MP has been arrested over sexual assault allegations. How rotten, in your view, is the culture in Westminster? I don't know the, the details of, of what has been reported. I've only just uh, seen it. Uh, and I think in these things, it's always important that process uh, takes its course and that we don't rush into to judgment until the full facts are available. And I'm sure that that is what is now happening. Connor Burns, thanks very much. Thank you.